naming carboxylic acids and derivatives. So in the textbook, um, they go through the carboxylic acids towards the beginning of chapter 20, and then the carboxylic acid derivatives, it looks like it's way into the chapter, but there are a lot of sections in this chapter, so it's really not that far into the chapter. This particular handout deals with naming both, um, so I'm gonna talk about everything together. Um, and the handout has kind of three parts. Um, we've got naming carboxylic acids, naming carboxylic acid derivatives, and then uh, finally there are some examples that we'll go over, or that I'll go over. So when you go to name a carboxylic acid, um, you name it based on the hydrocarbon name, the way we name anything else like aldehydes or ketones or alcohols, and you're gonna drop the E and replace it with oic acid. So therefore, butanoic acid comes from a four carbon chain. It would be butane if it were a hydrocarbon. We drop the E and replace that E with oic acid. If the compound is cyclic, you take the hydrocarbon name in its entirety, complete with the E, and you add carboxylic acid to the end. So here we have a cyclopentane. So we have cyclopentane carboxylic acid. And then the chlorine is on the third position relative to the carboxylic acid. We don't number the position of the carboxylic acid because if it's in a chain, it's always at the end of the chain, much in the same way an aldehyde would be. And if it's cyclic, the particular naming we're doing, the um, carbonyl is always the carbon that's immediately adjacent to the ring. There are some special names that you need to learn. There are some special names that you need to learn. Um, among those is acetic acid. Um, others that are in your book are formic acid, benzoic acid that you already learned, and then um, there are two more that you don't need to learn um, for propanoic and butanoic acid. So there are your carboxylic acids. The names for the carboxylic acid derivatives are based on the carboxylic acid names. So that's a little bit different where most of the time we base things on the hydrocarbon name. And what I've done in this handout is I've taken a given carboxylic acid and carried that structure down. Cyclic carboxylic acid carried that structure down and then carried it down for acetic acid. All right, so for acid halides, which in real life are mostly gonna be acid uh, chlorides, sometimes they're called acyl chlorides. So we're gonna take the carboxylic acid name, which ends in ic acid, and replace that with ul halide. So butanoic acid becomes butanoyl chloride, so we drop the um, ic and replace it with yl. Um, acetic acid turns into acetyl chloride, so the system works the same way whether you have a common name or a systematic name. The cyclic ones are a little bit different. We take the whole carboxylic acid and we replace it with carbonyl, whatever the halide is. So here we have an acyl bromide, which probably doesn't actually exist, but that's okay. And so we have three chlorocyclopentane, and then we just replace that whole carboxylic acid term with carbonyl bromide. For anhydrides, you take whatever the acid name is, something acid, and you change it into something anhydride. And that works if it's symmetric, that's all you have to do. So for example, we have this and this being symmetric anhydrides. And so if this were the acid, it would be um, butanoic acid. So we just replace acid with anhydride, the same thing with the acetic. 
if you have two um, different groups, in other words, if it's asymmetric, then you just do each one separately. So you have the anhydride here of butanoic acid and 3-chlorocyclopentane carboxylic acid. And so you just list these two names and then you stick anhydride as a word on its own. And by the way, the term anhydride means without water. And so if you think about taking, say, acetic acid and combining two acetic acid molecules to make a molecule of acetic anhydride, the byproduct for that would be water, hence the name anhydride. So esters are nice in one way because it doesn't matter what naming system you used for the parent carboxylic acid, whether it's a common name, oops, a common name, a systematic name, or cyclic, no matter what, you replace the ic acid part with eight. Um, this is the same thing you do for the anion of a carboxylic acid. So the anion of acetic acid is acetate. Where they're not as easy is that what esters have is this group that's attached directly to oxygen. So we have these groups that are attached to the oxygen. And sometimes that's referred to as the alcohol portion. And what we're gonna do for that is use the alkyl group name for that group. So starting from the right, we have an ethyl group attached to the acetate. So this is ethyl acetate. Um, you might remember this as one of the polar aprotic solvents that's used for SN2 reactions. Um, it's also a somewhat commonly used solvent in the organic lab. Uh, we tend to use a lot of diethyl ether. Ethyl acetate is a, as something else you can use. Um, it's not as hazardous as diethyl ether, but it has a higher boiling point, so it's harder to get rid of. And then going back over to the left, um, we have an isopropyl group on the ester of butanoic acid. So it's isopropyl butanoate, and there's a space here. And then we have a methyl group on this ester. So we take the carboxyl ic acid and replace the ic acid with eight. And with esters, you only can have one alkyl group on the oxygen because oxygen only makes two bonds and one of those bonds is part of the carbonyl. Amides are probably the most complicated. Um, for one thing, the names just get kind of ugly and convoluted. And for another, we have three different approaches depending on whether we have a systematic name from a cyclic carboxylic acid or a common name. Um, this is a little bit easier to think about if you notice that the part that we drop in each case starts either with an actual vowel or a pseudo vowel. I'm calling Y a pseudo vowel. Um, so that's, that's one issue. Um, otherwise, you just take the part that you drop and you replace it with amide with no space. Then we've got the alkyl groups that are attached to the nitrogen and you can either have no alkyl groups, in which case you have a primary amine, one alkyl group, in which case you have a secondary amide. I think I may have said amine on the first one. So this is a primary amide, secondary amide. Or you can have two alkyl groups, in which case you're going to have a tertiary amide. And again, we have to our groups. So that just follows the primary, secondary, tertiary that you talk about with amines. Um, NH2, NHR, NR2. And we don't have that with esters because esters can only have one alkyl group. And so we do kind of the same thing that we do with the alkyl group on the oxygen for an ester in that we name these alkyl groups um, as um, alkyl substituents, but we put an N in front of them, I think because there can be more than one to distinguish them from regular alkyl groups. So we'll start with the easy one. So 
Here we have the amide of butanoic acid. So we drop the oic acid and replace it with amide. So we drop a vowel, something that starts with a vowel, and we replace it with something that starts with a vowel. Um, so butanamide. Here we have one alkyl group on the nitrogen, which happens to be a methyl group. We also have another methyl group, and this is where the fun begins. Um, we have, we group those together, unlike we did what we did for ester. So we do N comma three dash dimethyl. So that takes care of this methyl group and this methyl group. And then cyclopentane carbox, I always think of like a box, um, amid. And then for the non-systematic names, um, and actually what I have here is based on formic acid, not based on acetic acid. So there's formic acid, which is one of the ones you're supposed to know. And either it gets its name from ants or ants get its name from formic acid. Um, apparently there are, or there is a lot of formic acid, relatively speaking, in ants. And there's a particularly gross and disgusting experiment you can do in organic chemistry where you take dead ants and you perform what's referred to as a destructive distillation of them to isolate the formic acid. And anyway, Back to the nomenclature, um, here we have two um, groups that are the same, two ethyl groups. So we have N, N, it's just like substituents. You use two Ns if you have two alkyl groups, diethyl, formamide. And the reason I picked this particular one is because um, it's one of the solvents, again, that we talk about as being a polar aprotic solvent for SN2 also known as DMF. Or, oh, wait a minute, so DMF, I always do this. So DMF, this is not DMF, DMF would be two methyl groups, not two ethyl groups. And that again is a polar aprotic solvent that we typically see in SN2 reactions. I do that every single time. So finally we have nitriles, and you might not think that nitriles are carboxylic acid derivatives because they don't have a carbonyl, it looks kind of weird, but the definition of a carboxylic acid derivative is something that can be hydrolyzed to the parent carboxylic acid. And with um, a fair amount of acid and some heat, yes, you can hydrolyze nitriles to carboxylic acids. It's not easy or fun for anyone, but you can do it. And the way these work, again, we have three different naming systems depending on where you stop, where you start. Here we're going to start from the alkane name for one and the acid name for the other two. So from a systematic alkane name like butane, you just stick nitrile on the end. Um, you don't drop the E or anything. From a common acid name, I don't know why I flip these around. Um, like this, we have, um, so if this were named as systematically, it's two carbons, so it would be ethane nitrile. Nobody calls it that. Um, it's the, or almost nobody, it's the nitrile based on acetic acid. So we drop the ic acid and replace it with O nitrile. So acetonitrile. And that is yet another um, polar aprotic solvent that can be used for SN2 reactions. And finally, for the nitriles off of cyclic groups, we replace the oxalic acid um, and replace that with nitrile. And again, kind of what you end up doing is you have a vowel at the end of what you had before followed by a consonant. And you end up with the same sort of thing in all of these cases. I think they're trying to avoid having a vowel at the end of one thing, or excuse me, they're trying to avoid having a consonant at the end of one part and at the beginning of the other, which would make these things even more awkward to say. So those are nitriles. So now we can move on and do some examples. And there, 
there is also online just the answers to these. So if you just want to look at those and not listen to the whole video again. Now, this is one of the videos that I very carefully recorded without sound. And so I'm now re-recording it. It'll be interesting to see if I come up with the same names or not. So first couple, we're supposed to provide names for structures, um, or excuse me, structures for names. So we have isobutyl benzoate. So we have the ester of benzoic acid. And then we have an isopropyl group, isobutyl group, not isopropyl. We have an isobutyl group. Um, and then we're done with number one, and I should give it a number. So number two. I kind of did on the other side. So this is the so-called DMF. And I actually did that. Well, if this were an actual piece of paper, it would have been on the other side of the piece of paper. But I did that when I worked through the examples. So we have formic acid, which has one carbon, and then the nitrogen, and then we have our two methyl groups. And then number three, we have 2-ethyl cyclohexane carboxylic acid. I think these names are way easier to go from names to structures than the other way around. So we have cyclohexane carboxylic acid. And you can kind of see how benzoic acid is a little bit of a contraction of benzene carboxylic acid. And then we have an ethyl group on the second position relative to the carboxylic acid. So there's number three. All right. So now we move on to the, the naming. And of course, we get to start with an amide. And so the parent here, let me make this just like a scooch bigger, right? So the parent here, that's more than a scooch. The parent here is this amide. Um, so this would be kind of like number three. It would be cyclohexane carboxylic acid, but instead it becomes carboxamide. And then we have additionally, we have an ethyl group here and a methyl group here. And this one's going to be prefixed with an N. And in terms of the order we're going to put these in, the N, well, excuse me, they go in alphabetical order. Um, so that means that the 3 ethyl is going to come in before the N methyl because we go in the order ethyl versus methyl. So that gives us expand that because for some reason that makes it neater. 3-ethyl N-methyl cyclohexane carbox amid. And again, we have, it will sink, the box. So the next one, yet another amide. So our parent chain here is going to be that. And then we have as substituents, we have three different methyls, one that's on the nitrogen and the other two that are on the number one, two, three, the third carbon. So when we list the ends, if they're all, the ends and the substituents, the regular substituents, um, if they're all the same substituent, like methyl as they are here, the end always comes before the numbers. I don't know who makes these things up, but somebody does. So we have N, three, three, trimethyl 
And then we have butte and drop the oic acid, amid, and there you go. Try to alternate the colors here so that it doesn't all run into it, each other. So this particular compound is an anhydride. Um, we have this oxygen in the middle. And so we have these two groups. So they're different groups. So we have a non-symmetrical anhydride. And so we need to name each one of those. The one on the left is benzoic. The one on the right is propanoic. So benzoic comes first. And this gets the name benzoic, propanoic, anhydride. Number seven is an acyl bromide, and it's based on cyclobutane carboxylic acid. Um, and we also have uh, a, a, we also have a halogen substituent. So our parent really wasn't the way I wanted to do that. So there's your parent, I guess that's part of the parent. And then we have a substituent. And so the substituent is on the one, two, third carbon away from the ring carbon that's attached to the carbonyl. So this is three bromo cyclobutan. O, we replace the ic acid with O, and then space bromide. All right, one more. So here we have number eight is an ester, and the parent chain is that. And then we have an ethyl group on the oxygen, so that's gonna be the very first part of the name. And then we have a methyl group. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And so we're gonna start the name with the ethyl part. So we have ethyl, then we have a space, and then we have four methyl and we have six carbons so we have a hexene so three hexene O8 and yes it would be fine to put the three there I think when you're writing them that looks better when you're pronouncing them it looks worse um, and in addition, um, since we've used line structures here, the um, double bond is in the E configuration. So let's be slightly elegant about this. And we can put E in front of that, barely. And then that's it. Um, the ones that I have online are the ones that I did for the first one without sound. So they, some of the drawings and so on might look a little bit different, but hopefully the names are the same. I think I drew a better box.